Good afternoon. My name is Patty Christensen. I have the delight to be your presenter this afternoon in a workshop about using picture books with adult learners. So this is one of my all-time super favorite topics. And as you can see, I brought along a few of my favorite friends in the books that I'm going to get a chance to introduce you in just a little bit. <coughs> Let me tell you a couple things about who I am and my background. Um, I have the really lucky job of being a professional storyteller, which means I get to go around and talk to groups and tell stories. And as my mom said, and they pay you for that? <laughs> said, yes, they do. So um, when a very lucky piece, I've been uh, telling stories <coughs> for about the last well, 17 years for some money, although as an elementary school kid, I always got little notes on my report card that said, talks a little too much to her neighbor, always has a lot to say. So I probably have been telling stories for a, a lot longer than that. And also have been a very happy picture book reader uh, since I was a very small kid. I also uh, worked for several years in the Escondido Public Library Literacy Program as their Families for Literacy Coordinator and also in their Ellie Project working with children of English language learning parents um, doing some things. So I've had a chance to uh, be around a few literacy blocks in terms of working with children, Families for Literacy, adult learners one-on-one, -on -one, and also in small groups and in classrooms, ESL classes, adult basic learning classes. So what I'm going to be covering today is uh, spending some time on some kind of concrete things both I have done and that I've also gleaned from the literature of experiences of other people throughout the literacy and teaching communities about what in the world are we talking about, about using picture books with grown-up people? So before we launch off in there, um, I want to just do a, a quick check. How many people here today are one-on-one um, -on -one literacy tutors? Raise your hand. Good. How many people are adult learners? Excellent. Welcome. We especially are pleased to have the adult learners here. How many are literacy staff people? Okay. Um, it might be an, an overlap. How many are, are library staff people? Some, we have some of those. Um, anybody working uh, in small group or classroom settings? Okay. Excellent. Uh, anybody working with Families for Literacy programs, projects, family projects? Okay. Um, well, all of you are welcome. And what I hope as we go along, um, this is going to be not only a chance for me to share some of the stuff I know, but for there to be an exchange of information because one of the best things about the literacy movement is uh, it's really a generous community. People think you don't have to invent the wheel and reinvent the carburetor and whatever all those other things that get invented. Now before we all launch in, I would like to invite you to take a little journey in your mind in terms of thinking about picture books. I want you to go back and I want you to think about either a really important picture book that you read that either like you loved or or one that was like just your favorite or one that like just kind of sticks in your brain maybe maybe that got you through some hard times something there could be as a child it could be as an adolescent could be as an adult and here's here's a key piece to know everybody doesn't have this in their experience or memory. So if, if nothing comes to mind, doesn't mean anything bad about you, but I just want you to just to do a little bit of that, you know, kind of it's like doing a Google search in your brain. Anything that comes under picture books that like were cool or important in my life. So just take 20 seconds and do that sort in your brain.
Okay, now I want to invite you, turn to one or two people next to you and just share anything that came to mind or if nothing came to mind, that that's okay. You can also, also say, eh, nothing came to mind or I sort of thought of this one. But just quickly, just see if there was any information that you got in checking that out. Okay, I'll invite you to bring your attention back up here. I also heard, overheard somebody say, well, I can think of a book that I loved reading with my kids. That's, that was another one, another piece too. I, I didn't think of that. Thank you for, for that prompt. But let's just hear, and if, if you wouldn't mind just speaking up loudly, a few of those um, books or experiences that came to mind. Who, who had something that right away? Yes. Green eggs and ham. Green eggs and ham. Polar Express. Oh, Polar Express. Oh, one of the most beautifully illustrated books on the planet. Who, who else had a, had a book or experience that came to mind? And think, yes. Uh, giving Trees. Oh, Giving Trees, uh, the Shel Silverstein old book. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cato's Kitchen, uh, Gary Soto, it's a more modern book, but the illustrations are fabulous. Yes, oh, that's a beautiful one. Where the Wild Things Are. Where the wild things are. Ooh, one of my favorite. That, that's like, and the wild things roar a terrible roar. Rawr. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. This was something I read to my own kids, but the napping house. Where everyone is sleeping. But the illustrations of the pictures, there was really what. The snoring granny. Right. <laughs> Lovely, bluish, beautiful colors. Yes, excellent. Any other, any other, yes. Mine was Dick and Jane. <laughs> you know, Dick and Jane is, gets really maligned as like, oh, those are stupid. I love them. Puff and Spot. And <laughs> there, the, there they were. Might be dating ourselves a little bit, though. Yes. The hungry King Caterpillar. Oh, the Hungry Caterpillar going, going on through. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I wasn't thinking of a book. I was thinking of my niece when she was two years old as a toddler, just learning to talk, walking around. It was a family reunion summer, so everyone, all these adults were there, and she just walked from adult to adult. Anytime someone approached a chair with a stack of books, read to me, please, read to me, please, read to me, please, read to me, please, read to me, please. And hard to say no to that. Very, very nice. Very, very good. One of, one of my good friends, who's a, a, a storyteller and an attorney, talked to me about when I asked her that question, she said, oh, I know the story that comes to mind immediately. The little engine that could. That's right. And she said, I'm going to tell you, that picture book got me through law school. <laughs> and I like her. She said, sometimes those late nights and studying torts and doing, and she would say, I would just think to myself, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And she said, I'm not kidding. I might not be an attorney today if I didn't have that little picture book. And I think that's, that's an old one from, man, early in the last century. But part of why I asked to to um, go ahead and think of that. Now, raise your hand if, if like, nothing came to mind. You, you really just didn't have anything, if you, if you wouldn't mind. Any, anybody who? Well, I didn't have a picture book. Okay. I didn't have books that came to mind. And that's an important thing. Everybody doesn't have the experience of picture books. It's, you know, sometimes, especially when we do work, in adult literacy. I, I loved Jonathan's speech earlier where he was talking about people who didn't necessarily fit into our school system and the way we run people through. Very often, teachers and uh, tutors and literacy professionals make huge, broad, general statements that everybody read and loved picture books as a child. And of course, if you didn't, how do you feel? <laughs> Loser, <laughs> bad, <laughs> crazy, you know, stupid, was stupid, 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 stupid. That um, some, pe some people never 
read picture books or had them read to them. How many of you grew up in families where there was some adults who read to children? Okay. Again, you know, literacy. Every, every child should be read to every night, every night, every night. That should be, you know, some families didn't happen. Some families, parents weren't around. Some families, there weren't books. So the idea that, that you were going to do that, some families, parents worked two, three, four jobs just to keep things afloat. And the idea that you were going to, on top of that, take time every night to read fluffy picture books was like, you know, that wasn't even an option. So one of the things that is really interesting is to know there is a bunch of really interesting stuff that's been happening, especially over this last decade in the literacy field, about using picture books with adult learners. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's just do a quick brainstorm of any ideas that people have about why in the world we might want to use picture books with adults. And oftentimes, we like to use the language of picture books as opposed to children's books, even though most libraries, it's the children's section. You're going to find these for some specific reasons. So we'll, we'll talk about that. But raise your hand. What's some ideas? My learners intimidated with the fine print on the adult books. And so, yes. So they like the picture books with the bigger print. Excellent. Size of print, you know, and especially as you get older eyes. Man, I like that large print section at the library. But yes. You can pick up cues to the words from the pictures. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. The, the illustrations are a critical part of these books. Yes. I was going to say that you can use it with, if you have an ESL learner and you're trying to teach them English, you know, so they understand English better, they can see the picture and then think of how they, it is in their language and then when you both say the word <coughs> in, in English, then they understand it, you know, to, are you saying it together with them? Excellent. I, I think we're, we're going we're gonna to talk some more about English language learners lately and, and some pieces of later, uh, some pieces about that. But I think especially with English language learners, critical. Yes. If your learner gets more comfortable with the picture book, they may be able to use that with their own children and break that cycle. Wonderful. With their children or grandchildren or nieces and nephews, some neighbors, some of those kind of people. Absolutely, that one. You know, that's one of the pieces with families for literacy, hoping to have both the parents and be able to pass it down. Wonderful. Somebody else in the back? Yes. You can finish the book in 15 minutes and actually accomplish something. The as a struggling learner to actually finish a book, as opposed to feel like. <laughs> Some books feel like it's impossibly long and that you never feel like you're making any progress. A struggle, struggle, struggle. There's something that's so good about one and you close it and <laughs> finished that book. Excellent. All right, let's some more over here. Yes. Practice constructing English sentences by what you see. Wonderful. Wonderful. Descriptive sentences. There, many, many of the picture books now have some of the finest illustrations in it that, that are really full of rich context and vocabulary and just cool stuff to talk about, build vocabulary of things that you wouldn't necessarily think of, but gives that open opportunity. Excellent. We're going to talk some more about that. Any other ideas? Yes. Um, I wonder if a person who doesn't have a lot of uh, experience reading might learn to kind of imagine the imagery by seeing picture books and then later be able to kind of move on to um, books without pictures and still be able to visualize the richness of what the books are putting across. Excellent. Excellent. I, th I think that's a really good point. One of the processes of acquiring English is being able to make those pictures. If you've had very little practice with that, especially having really rich pictures come along, you're like, Oh, that's what they're talking about. Sometimes sort of the poverty of that imagination piece is one of the big blocks that happens. Somebody over here, yes. Um, the, the plot is usually very clever and fast moving, so they don't have to 
agonize about what the book's about, they understand it quickly. Right. Yeah, that that, that so, reading the war and peace thing, and like, I have, you know, say, what's the story about? I have no idea. <laughs> 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 no, but usually, usually, you know, a, a, a classic picture book has 30 to 32 pages, which, you know, you can't tell war and peace in that. It's got to be, you know, much more simple, straightforward. But you're right, sometimes it's kind of clever. It's just like, okay, I kind of got what's happening. And yes? Springboard for really rich discussion. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. We're going to talk quite a bit more about that, about a uh, part both pre-reading, during reading, and after reading, gosh, there are many of these books are full of really rich things to talk about, be able to, to, to look through around that. Um, let me see. One of, one of the things, at, that as, as I was talking with people and looking at the, the research of saying, one of the dangers we run into in literacy it's so serious of work, and it's so sometimes so hard. And we, I, I've I've seen few people work harder than adult learners in those tutoring sessions and classes, just going and thinking and working so hard. But that doesn't necessarily give you much experience of like reading is really fun. That, you know, okay, I finished all the workbook pages. We did all the drills of past tense. We looked at how, you know, we do things in a series and da, 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 and we, we learned seven new vocabulary words. Woohoo! <laughs> you know, there's all of those are important as we go ahead, but part of what what we're trying to do and inspire is not just the skills of reading, but the love of reading. And the fact is that, you know, reading can be like cool, and it can be fun, and it can be full of joy, and there can be a way to share it with your family, with your kids, with yourself that's not like, Okay, I'm going to do the hard, stinky, really difficult thing in my spare time. I don't want to do hard, difficult, hard, not fun things for fun. You know, I mean, there just is a way, there you go. So part of um, what comes forward is said, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and, and do this. A um, couple more things. One is... An interesting phenomena, and I think this was kind of different than when most of us were growing up. There is a growing body of literature in picture books where the themes are pretty high level, mature kind of themes. I, I think when I was growing up, you know, I think Giving Tree was, was one of those that, you know, had more grief and loss and giving and sacrifice, but a lot of the books didn't seem like they had so much meat to it. Yeah, the substance part there. But there is a growing body of literature. And we're going we're gonna to get through some of this stuff, and then I'm going to pull some of the books out and also ask for some recommendations from you. But there, just, there are some stuff right now with some books that you go, you know what? Even though the vocabulary is more limited and it has pictures, this is not a little kid's book. And so I think that's, that's an important piece to know. We have more of this body of literature that is appropriate for adults. And you know, as we're talking about the, the kind of discussion that can happen there, um, there also is just sort of this fact that um, picture books kind of draw you to open them up, take a look, see, see what it all is. And, just like most people like to be told stories, most people actually, if you can do it in a way that's not insulting, like to be read to. There's something that's like kind of nice to be read to, that even if you're grown up, even if you're gray hair, it's sort of nice. You like kind of go, this, this is nice. It's a, it takes some of the pressure off just to like, okay, I'm gonna soak it in go ahead, 
take some things all on in. Um, one, uh, we, we talked about that the books being shorter. There also is, is a piece, because they're shorter, they fit into our shorter time of instruction, whether it is, you know, your one-on-one -on -one tutoring or your ESL class. You know, so many, so many things, now maybe this doesn't happen for you guys, but in some of the classes I've done where we're trying to discuss a longer book, well, about half people aren't there the second week who we talked about the first week, and so you're trying to catch them up. And then the third week, different people all together, which is like, oh, well, if you had been here, you would know, which, you know, is like, oh, man. So there's something about some of these things that can be done truly in one session, which allows for, you know, busy people's lives and how it all goes. Okay. Well, let's, oh, here's one more piece that I wanted to say that I so appreciated. I need to think about, have you ever in any situation in your life been assigned a book, a reading, a text that was too hard for you? Whether it was organic chemistry, um, just, you know, think about some class, something where they gave you, you know, the book was this thick, teeny little print stuff. You like, it, you know, that old thing, it's Greek to me, real going. And it is to think about that feeling about, okay, you just go, here we go, congratulations, this is, you know, this is your deal. And right away I can come up with like that sinking feeling in my stomach about, oh, no, I'm going to be asked to do this thing that isn't, I, I don't know how to do. And it's too hard for me and going on. But if you're assigned that and you open up and there's some pictures there, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to skip to the picture parts. I'm going to get, look, I'm going to see. There's something there that just gives you an immediate like, Phew. even if I don't know all the words, even if I know the stuff, I'm going to have a shot at knowing something like this because no matter what my language ability is, if I am able to see, I, I, I got something going for me here. Um, and somebody used an illustration that, that said using picture books and teaching reading is kind of like um, when you're learning how to ride a bike and you have either the training wheels or, my dad didn't believe in training wheels, but he believed in dad wheels where you know, he had to come along <laughs> and hold on to you until you know, you're ready and then hold back on again. But there's, there's something about, you know, we, we can just make people start, start reading just only text going on, but if there's a way to have a little bit of extra training wheels, a little you know, extra support as it goes along, man, does that make it easier and more fun? Um, one, one more piece I just I, I want to say quickly about uh, people who are um, learning a second language and coming along that, that I thought was really interesting. And in a language acquisition, they talk about like there's that, there's a silent period where you're maybe reading or, or hearing, understanding more and you can't think of how to say a darn thing practically. And there's a way in which picture books and some of these easier ones gives a way for sort of some input to be coming in to people as they're still struggling to be able to, to speak and, and to say things. So I thought, oh, that's, that's kind of a, of a good point there. Okay, uh, and I wanted to say a couple, a couple of things. Um, one of the things we didn't say about why we should do this is because it's fun and we're not allowed to say that anymore about anything. We can never do something just because it's fun, because it has to have strong theoretical basis. But I just want to tell you, all of the adults that I know who, who have used books is like, oh, that was fun. And there is something that's like, gosh, Reading should be fun! If we can't figure out some ways to have fun, in addition to having good theoretical foundation, you know, this should just